This short seminar introduces the Mastering Linear Time Workshop and points out some limitations of traditional time management. It also introduces the full range of benefits possible with time management and time mastery and introduces some principles and a few methods that can be useful for mastering time. If you've taken conventional time management workshops, you'll probably find that little or none of this seminar is covered by those workshops, in spite of the importance of this material for practical time management and for optimizing our well-being. Here's a preview of what we'll cover. We'll briefly explore linear time, that limiting feeling of time flow that we learn when we grow up in Western cultures. Then we'll look at the very different experiences of time present when we're in the so-called zone of peak experience or peak performance. We'll see how these different experiences are examples of personal time or psychological time in contrast with two other types of time, clock time and physical time. Personal time is the way an individual experiences time, whether flowing, timeless, or otherwise. Then, we'll briefly look at some limitations of conventional time management. Most important is that conventional time management assumes that time really does flow, which makes it impossible to get to the source of time pressures. Conventional time management can help us accomplish more, but in the process, it often adds stress to our lives. Conventional time management also doesn't adequately deal with interruptions, time wasting, procrastination, and the feeling of urgency. We'll also see that with methods of conventional time management and inner time management, there's a wide range of possible ways of relating to time, many different levels of mastery of time and time stress. We'll do a short inquiry exercise to look at our personal time and see whether between any two moments we can perceive additional moments. This is actually a very simple yet effective way to open up the constrictive way we habitually experience time. We can experiment a bit more with personal time and see how it changes while watching the second hand of a clock, while doing a special breathing technique used in Tai Chi and some other martial arts. We'll look at an example of how our feeling of time passing is created and strengthened. Finally, we'll review some additional resources that are available to you. Here's one image of how we relate to time. Can you relate to it? It depicts what is now sometimes called time poverty, the feeling that you don't have enough time. What do you see here? Time feels like it's out of our control and we feel anxious, even desperate, because we don't have enough of it. It seems that the passage of time is independent of consciousness. It doesn't matter what you think, feel, or do, or how you look at time, time doesn't change. We may feel somewhat helpless and think we can only adapt to this reality. Can you relate to this? What do you see here? Struggling against deadline pressure? Here's another image of time. What do you think this depicts? Linear time is a term to describe time that seems to move linearly like the horizontal conveyor belt in this picture. The belt seems to move at a constant, unchangeable speed between past, present, and future rooms in our experience. Linear time is the usual way that most adults in the West experience time. 
As time passes in a linear and directed way from one moment to another, we are positioned now in the present. We spend time by putting tasks, our activities, in equal sized containers. What we can accomplish seems limited by the size of the containers on the conveyor. What are the effects of the experience of linear time? Seeing time linearly causes us to struggle and race against time. All the images we saw involve struggling against time. Our work is effortful and stressful. Time has a kind of built-in friction. Physician Larry Dossi said, many illnesses, perhaps most, may be caused either wholly or in part by our misperception of time. I am convinced that we can destroy ourselves through the creation of illness by perceiving time in a linear one-way flow. The last point here is that, as indicated by the conveyor image, what can be accomplished is limited by size of the containers, seemingly by the structure of time itself. Here are a few questions for you to consider. We're not looking for right or wrong answers here, just a description of your experience. First, do you think that time always flows or not? If it seems to always flow, does it flow at a constant rate? Or do you think that the flow can somehow be changed? <laughs> 